When we talk about aesthetics, we are usually talking about the philosophy of the beautiful or things that are beautiful. If we talk about the aesthetics of a painting, like what you see on the screen, we are then it's something that we're looking at and we're talking about the beauty that we see with our eyes. However, when we talk about the aesthetics of music, it's a little bit different. If we talk about the aesthetics of music, we're basically talking about how music makes us feel. Some music might make you feel happy or full of energy, and some music might make you feel sad. Scientists are starting to find out that music affects the brain more than anything else at all. Throughout this lesson, I'm going to ask questions. Every time I ask a question, I want you to pause the video, write down the question, and then write down your answer to the question. And when you're done with that question, I want you to push play again and go on until it's time to pause for another question. First question, is music talent something that people are just born with? Some people might be born with more musical talent than others. For instance, I had a teacher one time, and she was a music teacher. She taught music lessons, singing, and piano, and was pregnant while she was teaching those lessons. Years later, when her daughter was on a bus with her school choir in elementary school, she came home and she told her mother that her teacher lied today. And her mother said, what do you mean she lied? And the little girl said, she said, hmm, this is a C, but it's not. And then she sang the, the C for her mother, and her mother plucked it out on the piano, and she was right. So this little girl was born with perfect pitch because she heard music being played properly the whole time that she was in the womb. Although um, that kind of thing happens, and some people seem to be born with more talent, music talent is still something that needs to be learned. We recognize pitch, which is the different notes, naturally, but to know what that pitch is, we need to study and grow our music learning. The study of the effects of music on the mind is something fairly new. However, even the ancient philosopher Plato, who lived in 429 to 347 BC, that's a long time ago, was very troubled over the way that music could influence the morals and the emotions of human beings. He believed that music could either improve the minds of young people or corrupt them, depending on what they were listening to. Question 2. What are some reasons that you like the music that you do? Question 3. Do you think that the music you listen to has any effect on your behavior? Question 4. Do you think that this music has any effect on how you feel? Question 5. Parents have been known to say things like, that music will rot your brain. Do you think there's any truth to that statement? Now I want to tell you a little bit about the different parts of your brain and what those parts do. I know this might sound boring, but I'm going to explain to you in just a little bit. Um, the frontal lobe, do you see where the red arrow is pointing? That section helps you with decision making, problem solving, control of purposeful behaviors, consciousness, and emotion. Do you see where the blue arrow is pointing? The primary cortex is responsible for regulating voluntary movements. In other words, if you didn't have your primary cortex or that part of your brain, uh, your arms and legs would just flail about like they wanted to, and you would have no control. Um, the green arrow is pointing to the primary sensory cortex. That processes sensory information received from your body. Sensory is things like touching and seeing and smelling. 
The purple arrow is the peridial lobe and it receives and processes sensory information from the body. This is also where letters form words and words combine into thoughts. The brown arrow is pointing to the occipital lobe and it processes information related to vision. So the things that you see get processed. So if you see a dog, you don't know it's a dog until the occipital lobe in your brain tells you that. The cerebellum is the black arrow and it regulates the initiation and timing of movements and is important for maintaining balance and posture. It also helps modulate the force, steadiness, and range of your movement. The orange arrow is pointing to the temporal lobe. This regulates memory, emotions, hearing, language, and learning. So that part of your brain is what helps you to learn. In this picture, you can see that the injured man has lost the front half of his brain. Um, I want you to look at the image again of the brain functions and see that he is missing the frontal lobe and probably the primary motor cortex. So this will be question six. What brain functions will he no longer be able to perform? Now I want to talk to you about some things that are really interesting about your mind. Look at this first picture. Do you see the red or orange parts? There are two arrows pointing to some of them. Um, do not count the arrows, but the orange parts in the brain are the parts that are active when you're trying to remember something. On this one, the arrow points to the front part of your brain, and that's where you do your thinking. And the whole front part right there is orange or red because the person is thinking. When you're walking, you can see the parts that are orange or red of your brain that are having the most brain activity so that you can walk. The, um, the yellow parts and the green parts are also being used slightly when you're walking, but it's the red or the orange that is what's used the most. See the red parts on this brain scan? These are the ones that are active when you're hearing something. You see the red parts that are active when you're seeing something, and that's mostly in the back of your brain. But this is kind of exciting. When you're listening to music, look at all the different parts all over your brain that are red, and that means music connects to every part of your brain. When a person listens to music, especially a familiar tune, there's much more activity in the brain than simply the activation of the auditory cortex or the part where you, you hear. Scientists and doctors believe that music can help build the speech center to the opposite side of the brain. What is it about music that causes this to happen? The speech center is only on one side of the brain, but since music touches all parts of the brain, it can help your speech center to rebuild on the other side of your brain. Down here, these two pictures, the one on the left, that's brain activity when someone is speaking and listening to speech on one side of the brain. But the brain activity when singing or playing music on the left side there shows that it is all over and it's on the other side of the brain too. The same thing is going on. It lights up various parts of your brain, so listening to music is really good for your brain.